All right, so I rarely do this, but because I just felt like I didn't talk about episode 20 of Villain Saga season two enough. And even one of the Light Bulb Army members actually told me, Kakashi, he was like, oh, just very short review, which it was. And even I was shocked. I was like, oh, wow, this review was only seven minutes and some change. But normally when that happens, like when the review is short, uh, if I were to uh, go longer, I would literally just restart the entire review. And I did not want to do that because it just it's just going to take too long. So normally my villain saga reviews are like 15, 20 minutes. And I know you all like that because obviously you need something to watch, to listen to. Well, more to listen to because I'm just using a, a picture as the backdrop and stuff of the video. But some things to listen to. But I'm just going to do a part two i guess this might be a first ever of the episode so based on some of the comments kakashi left and stuff so he says just as we obey you power is justice it is one thing very profound also his son giving the order of retreating was the right choice all right so this is what kakashi uh, said and I said, yeah, Katil literally was getting his men killed because he wanted revenge so bad. Shows how bad of a leader he is and his inexperience with war. I forgot to talk about the brutality of war as shown in the episode. I actually should have talked about a couple more stuff. So let's talk about the brutality of war. So I mentioned it briefly how war is bad and stuff. But the brutality of war, literally, in battle, especially during these times, when you're in war, you lose limbs, you lose eyes, you lose legs. And that scene was so sad where the guy, where basically Snake said retreat, everybody was retreating and the guy tried to retreat, but his legs were chopped off and he's like, oh, my legs. And then he just got stabbed and got killed. I was like, that is just horrible. Many people lost their limbs. One of the members of Snake's group lost his arm. And the thing with him was that that he after snake's men lost his arm he just wanted to keep fighting he was in a frenzy to keep fighting because the adrenaline was pumping and not only the adrenaline we got to realize the pride of nordic men was one of the things that was mentioned in episode 19 and how some of the men when they learn oh we're gonna fight the king they realize okay it's too late to back out now it's too late to run away because it's our pride on the line, right? Now, I don't know if everybody actually fought on behalf of trying to pay off their debts, trying to get their debt canceled by Ketil. But let's say you were in this situation. If I was personally in this situation and Ketil, after the fact, said, oh, yeah, you're going to fight the king's army. I would have literally just left and ran away. I don't care about my pride because sometimes, like I said, you have to put your pride away in certain situations. It's fight or flight. Are you going to fight knowing it's a 100% chance you will die? For example, it, okay, let's, nice, let's say 99.9%, .9%, right? Or 99%. Let's say 1% chance you survive. How will you survive? If you are not in the front lines, if you are all the way in the back, and then they say retreat and you heard it and you're like, okay, let me get out of here. Now, if you're in the front lines and you're fighting the Jones Vikings, you are just dead. That's it. You, even if you have a little battle experience, right? For example, I believe because, for example, like I was saying, like Fox. Fox said he killed about 30 men. He found enjoyment out of it, which I'm not going to repeat what I said in part one of the review. He has some battle experience, so he felt himself superior to others, right? When it comes to battle. But then he realized that when you fight an army, especially the Yom's Vikings, which are really strong and they love battle, battling for them, war is like fun for them because you have to realize at the end of the day, a lot of the Vikings, they believe in uh, Valhalla, right? That if you fight and die in battle honorably, you'll go to Valhalla. So they're happy to to die in battle and stuff. They're smiling, like slashing people up and stuff, which is, you know, another brutality of war, which, yeah. And the difference in power in Fox, when Fox saw this, 
made him shake with fear. So another thing that war brings in the hearts of men is fear. Some men are strong. Some men are weak. Some men are in between. But fear is always there. No matter if you're strong or if you're weak, there's fear of defeat, fear of the strong, and just fear in general when you're in battle, right? Because if you're strong and you're fighting somebody that's strong and you miscalculate a little bit, you're dead, right? Skills matter in battle. And fear is important. Fear is not always a bad thing. Fear is important because it lets you know that you're alive. It keeps you alive because if you're not fearful and you're going into battle, like I have no fear, I can overtake everything. Yeah, you might slash a couple men here and there, but it will get to the point where you might start doing dumb things in battle, not analyzing the situation. And one slice from a sword at the right angle and you're dead, right? So Fox fear where his legs were trembling was the fear of the power of the Yom's Vikings, the fear of their strength, the fear of how in battle they were, they weren't, they didn't look human basically, right? And this is some powerful stuff, which I'm so sorry. I didn't mention this in part one of this review of the review, but I'm thinking about this stuff right now. This is not uh, this. There's no script or anything like that. This is just off the top of my head, like 99% of my videos are right. So that's why I mess up sometimes and I don't feel like going back and editing and all this stuff. You know, I'm, I'm giving you the stuff raw and stuff, the information. So we have that, right? Back to what I was saying, brutality of war. War is not pretty. War takes away. War brings pain. War destroyed Arnheed's family. War destroyed many countless families. The burning, the pillaging, all that stuff, the looting. Well, pillaging, looting, same thing. It's just, it's just very sad. And just the destruction of the community, right? Which Arnhe was saying that, you know, she felt like what was happening, that like there was a war. And it's it's not a good thing, right? Now, like Aner said in an episode to Thorfinn, sometimes you have to fight to protect the things you want to protect. And that is true. Now, like I've been saying, I think Thorfinn will fight. He wants to go to Vinland. And he will fight to keep peace, to have peace in Vinland, right? With I don't think it's just going to be Thorfinn and Aner. I think it's going to be a couple of people that will make the journey to Vinland, even though the journey will be long. Not guaranteed that they will make it safe there. They could die on the way there, like the waves, the ocean. The ocean is not just calm and stuff. There's storms and things like that. But knowing Leaf, if Leaf goes with them, I don't know if it's Leaf or Leif. Uh, it's, it's probably pronounced Leif. If Leif goes with them, even better because he's a great navigator on the ocean and stuff. And they definitely need uh, one of those type of people, right? So, yeah. And the other thing that I mentioned in part one of the review was that Fox, we actually learned his crime, which he killed an Earl, right? Well, it was a jar, uh, I, I, or Earl, right? It says, Jarls, Jarls were kings or Earls and not, vi- not every North country at them. Iceland did not. In early Norse history, the Jaros were regional, but over time as they expanded. So basically, there were kings. And he killed a king. So obviously, you do that, you're going to be branded a criminal and there's going to be a bounty on your head. So that's why Snake, Fox, Badger, and everybody else don't use their real names because they most likely plotted to kill this, uh, this king, right? So... The next thing I'm going to talk about here is actually the Thorfinn and Knut stuff. Like I said in part one, I don't think Thorfinn is going to actually physically fight Knut. But I also don't think that Knut will listen to Thorfinn. Well, I'm not going to say that. I think Knut will say, yeah, no more casualties because he, he doesn't want that. He... 
his, his army, some of the members of his armies, uh, the soldiers, they, they just don't listen. They just don't listen. But And then he will stop the bloodshed, take over Katil's farm. And Katil is not dead at this moment because Snake refuses to have him die. And now Katil literally earned his name Iron Fist Katil, which is a name he stole from another man actually named Katil, which Snake knew the real Katil. And he earned the name now, the nickname, because he actually commanded an army. Yes, it, he took the loss, but he still did that, right? And he was a novice commander, a commander with his head filled with revenge and trying to take his pride back. But like we said before, power is justice. Power prevailed and it prevailed in the favor of Canute because he's the king, got some of the strongest men in, in, the, uh, in the region working with him and his army. So that's why Catel took the L basically. So let's see the other thing. Thorfinn, at the end, when he said, I'm talking to Canute, gave me the vibes of Minato when he got angry and the village was attacking. Okay, I'm not going to mention the Naruto stuff. But yeah. So, I was saying that it was an amazing moment when Thorfinn, at the end, was talking about Canute. The other thing that I forgot to mention in, in part one, it was the story that Leif mentioned about Thorfinn and about his people going to Iceland because they wanted to leave battle and how before Thorfinn saw that as weak and now he sees that as a good thing shows a lot of growth for Thorfinn right because Thorfinn when he was a little kid he admired strength he admired warriors warriors and stuff he's like oh I want to be a warrior like because during this time period when you're seen as a warrior you're seen as strong and Thorfinn is uh a nor from the from that part of the region he, from the Vikings right like if you are strong in battle, you're respected, you're honored, and all this. So that's why he felt originally when he was a kid, oh, they were cowards and all that stuff because of that. But then he realizes they wanted to get away. His people wanted to get away from battle, all those wars, because war only brings anguish, pain, right? Okay, let's not say only. For the majority of people, that's what it brings. And for the victors, it brings glory, right? But at the price of people's livelihood. And that glory is just not a good thing. That's glory. I'm not even going to say glory. I'm just going to say victory, right? Because there's nothing glorious about war, right? Stealing land and all this stuff, which I'm not going to get too deep into that. But yeah, the next thing, um, the oh yeah, when Thorfinn actually punched Aner, when Aner saw Katil, that goes to show you that the power of love is a double-edged sword. It's good and bad. It's good because you actually really care about the person. It's bad because you care about this person so much that you're willing to sacrifice everything, right? Even your humanity. What do I mean by that? Aner was literally going towards Katil to kill him. He was not going to punch him once and be satisfied. That's why we saw the scene where we didn't even see his eyes. His eyes were just, it was just, his eyelids were, his eyes were just completely white. The rage overtook him, right? The love he has for Arnheed overtook him. He let his emotions take control. Aner at that moment was not thinking logically. He just wanted revenge for what happened to Arnheed. His love was that strong. And there we go with the theme of revenge and how revenge leads men to do irrational things. And it definitely led Aner to almost do something irrational, but be it not for his friend Thorfinn, he would have done something irrational. But I don't think Snake would have let it happen. But you know what I mean. Uh, the other scene with the CPR scene, I was shocked about that. Like Kakashi put that in the comments. I was also shocked. I'm like, CPR? <laughs> in, in these times, they, they, they knew CPR. 
Um, the other thing that he wrote was the son that went behind and killed the two royal guards because to be a royal guard, you are supposed to be really good. So that's credit to that. Also, the king being able to somehow defend himself and even praise for it. It's so crazy, Thorgil's strength. When he struck King Canute, King Canute blocked the attack and literally chipped the sword of Canute. I will have been, I will have been uh, screaming in the reaction. I mean, not reaction, in the review. If he actually sliced through the entire sword, but he chipped the sword of Canute and Canute's hand was numb. His whole, like his whole arm was numb because of the power of Thorgil. Now, we know that Thorgil is really strong. He used to be part of the king's group and stuff, but this is another reason why Canute saying he wants him back, Thorgil back with him is the dumbest thing ever because look, it's not just... You got to realize, it's not just, oh, Thorgil, enemy of Canute. Chitil's farm is going to be taken. His father got injured. His brother, Omar, is somewhere, I don't know, <laughs> somewhere in the, in, the, in the beach still, like, uh, probably thinking, oh, I can't swim or whatever over there with a sword. Uh, but yeah, it's like, I know the saying, keep your friends close, but your enemy is closer. But me personally, keep your enemies as far away from you as you can because, right? Let's say Thorgil joins Canute again. Everything is sweet for a couple of years. And then what's happening through those years? It's just Thorgil calculating his perfect moment where he could, let's say he's, he never could get along with the king, but maybe the king has two or three guards or maybe the king is sleeping. And then Thorgil, one of those days, Canoe will realize, oh, I know I have a beast with me. I know I have a monster with me, but it's fine. His strength is admirable and stuff. He has guts and all this. Uh, I know he, he might betray me one day, but I'll be prepared for it. But the thing is, sometimes preparation, sometimes plans don't pan out. And I'd rather not have Thorgil with me. And if Thorgil gets captured... I'd rather have him execute it because Thorgil, it just takes one man to rally many, right? So let's say Thorgil rejoins Canute, follows Canute for some reason, and slowly but surely Thorgil starts corrupting Canute's army, the men that are not happy with Canute, the men in the army. That are like, oh, Canute's going soft. Canute's making all these rules we got to follow. We want things to go back to the days of old where it was just ravage and pillage and have duels and stuff. And then slowly that corruption spreads and spreads and spreads. And eventually what happens, right? A coup, they, a coup could happen to overthrow the king. And who will lead that coup? Thorgil. Right? So that's what I'm saying. One man is dangerous. Especially a man with a vendetta against the king. Right? Oh, man. I'm glad I'm doing a part two because even I'm like, oh, that, that's, that's some deep stuff right there. All right. Now we're going to talk about the uh, Thorfinn and a hundred men. So... Basically, Kakashi was like, uh, I don't think Thorfinn can manage 100 men. I don't think Thorfinn is going to fight all of them. I don't think Thorfinn's going to fight at all. He's just going to speak to Canute. Canute will listen, either do what Thorfinn wants or don't do anything, right? Because at the end of the day, Thorfinn, I mean, Canute, does, Thorfinn has done nothing to Canute. So Canute is not going to execute him or anything like that. And this is what I said. Canute will probably tell him that he will achieve peace by any means necessary. We are seeing Canute's army not listening to him. Floki sent the Yams Vikings and Canute's order was not to kill fleeing soldiers or Katil. They did not listen to his orders. Some of the soldiers don't want to listen. Like how Canute outlawed duels as well. I think his army could lead to his downfall if some soldiers don't listen. Exactly. And going back to what I was saying with Thorgil. His so some of the soldiers already, well, the Jumps Vikings follow Floki mainly, but Floki follows the king, which is Canute. So they'll follow Floki's order, but at the same time, they're soldiers, they're Vikings, they're rowdy, 
they're not trying to be always organized and stuff. So w- w- only time will tell. But I think that Canute will tell Thorfinn this line. I am the king. I make my decisions how I want. And nobody can tell me what to do. Or he will say, oh, it's been so long, Thorfinn. Yes, I agree that uh, this death should stop because people are assets. I will use these people. These people are necessary to tend to the farm. And the interesting thing is, I don't know if Canute will erase their deaths or keep them. Uh, most likely keep the deaths to have these people work in the farm for free, basically. Not for free, but to repay their deaths, right? And yeah, so people are assets. So he's not just going to kill all of them, right? Even though they oppose the king, even though they fought in Katil's army. And I think that's what is going to be. That's what's going to happen. Maybe Canute will even ask Thorfinn, hey, do you want to join me, Thorfinn? And Thorfinn is probably just going to say, no, my days as a warrior are gone. This is just speculation and stuff. But yeah, like I was saying in the episode review, this was a really great one. I really gave my rating in part one of this video. Check it out on my channel. The rating was an 8 out of 10. And these are the extra thoughts I wanted to mention. And yeah, thanks. You know, if you ever feel like a review is too short or something, even I felt it, like seven minutes, like my villain saga reviews are longer than that. I, I guess it's because I was a little tired when, when I did uh, when I did the review, because normally the videos are like at least 10 minutes or longer. But yeah, hope you enjoy this one and peace. All right. So I was just making a thumbnail for this. Uh, part two of the review and i just realized what thorfinn said to aner he said aner please don't put yourself under the same curse as me and that same curse uh is the curse of revenge the curse of anger how anger turns into hatred how thorfinn when he was a kid hated Askeland so much because of the death of his father and wanted revenge so badly and aner was almost uh falling into that path now that is some powerful stuff, I tell you. Like the creator of Villain Saga is just a genius and I am so happy they made this series. I remember at first I was like, um, I was like, oh, the season two starting off slow. I thought we were gonna get a bunch of action, uh, Thorfinn going back, uh, you know, fighting and stuff. You, you know how season one was, Thorfinn was like a, a badass, little badass and stuff. But no, season two, for me, it, season one is important, but season two is more powerful than season one. Season two just took what Thorfinn's father said, the message where, Thorfinn, you have no enemies. And season one, Thorfinn didn't understand that. And then in season two, he finally realized that it's true. I have no enemies. Because in season one, he was under the illusion that Askelan was his enemy. I must take him down. I must make him pay. Like Aner saw Katil as his enemy. And Thorfinn put punch sense into him. Like, no, don't fall under the same curse. Because that path that Thorfinn took, that of bloodshed, of guilt, it just haunts him haunted him for years still haunts him to this day will forever haunt him just because he's changing doesn't mean he won't stop having nightmares well, well let's say he has, stops having nightmares doesn't mean he won't not think of all the lives he took where he lost count of how many lives he took that's how bad it got where Thorfinn was killing so much when he was a not even a teenager. I think Thorfinn was a preteen. And now, you know, he's, he got scared and realized, I, I, don't want, I don't want my friend Aner to go through that same path. And it's good that that happened because, to tell you the truth, um, that's what Thorfinn needed. Thorfinn needed somebody to yank him and say, look, kid. Like, this is not the right path. The, the path of vengeance leads, nothing, leads to nothing but sorrow and pain. 
I just wanted to mention that right there because that uh, so much powerful stuff in this episode. Wow, so much good stuff.